Percy runs away. Henry, Gordon and James were shut up for several days. At last, the fat controller opened the shed. I hope you are sorry, he said sternly, and understand you are not so important after all. Thomas, Edward and Percy have worked the line very nicely. They need a change and I will let you out if you promise to be good. Yes, sir, said the three engines, we will. That's right, but please remember that this no shunting nonsense must stop. He told Edward, Thomas and Percy that they could go and play on the branch line for a few days. They ran off happily and found Annie and Clarabelle at the junction. The two coaches were so pleased to see Thomas again, and he took them for a run at once. Edward and Percy played with trucks. Stop, 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 screamed the trucks as they were pushed into their proper sidings. But the two engines laughed and went on shunting till the trucks were tidily arranged. Next, Edward took some empty trucks to the quarry, and Percy was left alone. Percy didn't mind that a bit. He liked watching trains and being cheeky to the engines. Hurry, 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 he would call to them. Gordon, Henry and James got very cross. After a while, he took some trucks over the main line to another siding. When they were tidy, he ran onto the main line again and waited for the signalman to set the point so that he could cross back to the yard. Edward had warned Percy, be careful on the main line, whistle to tell the signalman you were there. But Percy didn't remember to whistle, and the signalman was so busy and forgot Percy. Bells rang in the signal box. The man answered, saying the line was clear and set the signals for the next train. Percy waited and waited. The points were still against him. He looked along the main line. Peep, peep, he whistled in horror, for rushing straight towards him was Gordon with the express. Poop, 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 whistled Gordon. His driver shut off steam and applied the brakes. Percy's driver turned on full steam. Back, Percy, back, he urged. But Percy's wheels wouldn't turn quickly. Gordon was coming so fast that it seemed he couldn't stop. With shut eyes, Percy waited for the crash. His driver and fireman jumped out. Oh, oh, groaned Gordon. Get out of my way. Percy opened his eyes. Gordon had stopped with Percy's buffers a few inches from his own. But Percy had begun to move. I won't stay here. I'll run away, he puffed. He was soon clear of the station and running as fast as he could. He went through Edward's station whistling loudly and was so frightened that he ran right up Gordon's hill without stopping. He was tired then and wanted to stop, but he couldn't. He had no driver to shut off steam and to apply the brakes. I shall have to run till my wheels wear out, he thought sadly. Oh dear, oh dear, I want to stop, I want to stop, he puffed in a tired sort of way. He passed another signal box. I know just what you want, little Percy, called the man kindly. He set the points and Percy puffed wearily on to a nice empty siding ending in a big bank of earth. Percy was too tired now to care where he went. I want to stop. I want to stop. I have stopped, he puffed thankfully as his bunker buried itself in the bank. Never mind, Percy, said the workman as they dug him out. You shall have a drink and some coal, and then you'll feel better. Presently, Gordon arrived. Well done, Percy. You started so quickly that you stopped a nasty accident. I'm sorry I was cheeky, said Percy. You were clever to stop. Percy now works in the yard and finds coaches for the trains. He is still cheeky because he is that sort of engine, but he is always most careful when he goes on the main line.